help fulfill the canon of the Bible? Realize how many of the 12 apostles wrote any scripture? Most of the 12 wrote none. <laughs> Barnabas wrote none. Timothy wrote none. Silas wrote none. Titus wrote none. Writing scripture has nothing to do with whether you're an apostle or not. The point in number three is they had no authority apart from scripture. Jesus had no authority apart from scripture. Think of that. Jesus' authority, he used the word of God. He used the scripture. The twelve used the scripture. Paul said, you know, examine to see if this is so. Today, our authority is only the scripture. It's not some independent person separate from the word of God. And of course, the last point that I've already mentioned, missionary and apostle are one and the same. Missionary is the same word in Latin. It's just the same word. I think Satan has drowned this out so that there can be a blizzard of misunderstanding on God's most important men. In Ephesians it says that God gave gifts for the church and he said, first I gave apostles, second prophets, third teachers, the third evangelists, pastors, and evangelists. Why would God get rid of the top two men, apostles and prophets, and it says to build the church? The church is not completed yet. He says until it all comes to the unity of the faith. And he said all five of those gifts, apostles, prophets, baptized teachers, were to build it, to complete it, until the unity of faith. So that has not happened. It's not completed yet. That's why we still have pastors and teachers. That's why we still have evangelists. That's why we still have prophets and apostles. Because it's not completed. And apostles are the ones that really start churches. And some missionaries do this. But now let me just quickly say this. And again, I wrote a whole book on a lot of this. So you really, there's a lot of rabbit trails. I don't have time today to go in, but uh, called the church revolution. And you need to read this to really understand it. But here, here is the issue. Here is the issue. The majority of the, quote, missionaries, which are apostles, that are out there today, don't qualify. Why? Because every apostle in the New Testament was fruitful and effective at a level of development of winning and building and starting churches. Most of our apostle missionaries in the missionary field Many of them went to be missionaries and never led one person to Christ. Much less built up a church. Look at Paul and Barnabas. Barnabas was one of the more mature men in Jerusalem. They sent him up to Antioch. The apostle Paul, saw later come Paul, it says in Acts 13, verse 1, they were preaching and teaching. They were prophets and teachers and building up this big church in Antioch. And then the Holy Spirit sent them out. <coughs> what time do you see in the Bible where a missionary was sent out where they had not been proven? In fact, Paul, before he even picked up Timothy, said he had been proven. He had a reputation for what he had been doing in Lystra and Iconium and Derby. He had developed a reputation. There's so many distinctions that are so different from the missionary movement today. They always teamed up with one man that was a leader. They always had been mature and working together. They didn't just join some organization and get, I don't have time to go into all of this. But once you understand that missionaries should get their, their direction from apostles, which is the same word in the New Testament, all of a sudden your eye will, your jaw will drop. Your understanding will be revolutionized. We're giving, we're fostering millions, probably billions of dollars to men and women in the missionary field that should come home and learn to lead one, their next door neighbor to the Lord. And if they can't lead their neighbor to the Lord, what are they doing over in some foreign country where they don't know the culture, the language, or anything else? Come home, lead somebody to Christ. Then lead two or three to Christ. Then become an elder in your local church. Build that church up. Build a few others. Paul never went to Rome until he went to the, the closest region around. And they spread out and they developed. Same way with Paul. Paul wasn't called an apostle. Timothy wasn't called an apostle uh, at first. He may have been an elder, in fact, in Lystra. 
And he, then he traveled with Paul for some time, and then he was later, later sent out by Paul, and then he was an apostle. But we put people, any young person that gets excited about Christ through some theoretical training school, give them a little uh, sheep thing to hang over their desk, and boom, send them over to another place, learn a language. They are no more qualified to be an apo a missionary than, than a, a man jumping over the moon. They need to come back. If you've not led people to Christ, if you've not discipled men and women, if you've not built one church or helped start one church or help increase the development of a church, you do not have the credentials to be an apostle, a missionary. And you need to come back home and don't give money to people like that. You're hurting them. You're hurting the mission field. You are not helping the work of God. And this is why I'm very concerned that we understand this. And Satan, how clever Satan was to take this one little word, the most important men in the New Testament. You see, if you don't have the model of apostles to follow in the New Testament, who do you follow? Jesus was an apostle. Let's take Jesus out of the mix. Let's take the twelve. They're apostles. Let's take them out of the mix. Let's take Paul. He was an apostle. Take Paul out of the mix. Who do you have left? Who are you going to follow? What example are you going to follow? You'll come up, that's why we have all these pure churches coming up with their own ideas and their own system. Look, I thank God for all my brother. I thank God for every pair of church that's doing what they know to do. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't say, hey, let's repent and accept the Word of God and get back to the Word and follow it. Anyhow, we're out of time. I, didn't, I just got the first word possible. So... Uh, there's a lot more on it in chapter 1 and, and, and in the book Church Revolution. But we'll be hit by this uh, uh, because it's, it's misunderstood. So if it's misunderstood, we don't avoid it. We share it more and more and more until it's re-understood. And we model it by the grace of God the best we can, okay? And we do this for the sake of Christ. For the sake of fulfilling the Great Commission. For the sake of fulfilling it. Did you know in the first century they fulfilled the Great Commission? Did you all know that? There's over a half a dozen verses in the New Testament where they reached the whole world. But today we have over 2 billion people that have never heard the name of Jesus. Why? Because we're not following God's ways. You cannot fulfill God's mission unless you follow it in God's way. As my brother John here says, that the means is is just as important as the end. And really, God wants us to focus on the means. It's, it's Karl Marx. It's even influenced our Christian culture. The means is all important for us. It's all we have to deal with. That's all we deal with is the means. Karl Marx said the, the, means justify, uh, the end justifies the means. And so we think it doesn't really matter. As long as we go after whatever we're after, it does matter. That's all that God looks at is the process. He'll take care of the means. Yes. Oh, the end, excuse me. Yeah, he'll take care of the ends. Anybody have any else, anything to share, to add, or questions, or thoughts? Search these things. Paul said you're more noble if you search these things. He didn't just say, because I'm the Apostle Paul, you've got to accept it. In fact, when he said he had authority... He said he used their authority to build them up. Spiritual authority. The reason people are afraid of authority is because they themselves have abused authority. They don't understand authority. Authority, New Testament authority, is love and action. I like this example of authority. When Jesus said he was washing the disciples' feet, and when he came to Peter, Peter said, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you cannot be... You can't have any part of me. You can't have any part of me. That's authority, isn't it? That's authority. You're going to let me serve you. I'm going to use my authority to serve you. And apostles, I mean, what, what about elders? Where do they get their authority? I'd be more afraid of an elder than an apostle any day of the week. Because an elder is not even qualified to be an apostle. You've got to be more mature, more humble, more of a servant to be an apostle than you do be an elder. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. <clears throat> help us to grow in it. Help us to understand it. Help us to search for it. In fact, Lord Jesus, we read in 1 Corinthians 12 that you said, 
there were first gifts to the church. First were apostles, then second were prophets, third were teachers. And, and then you said in 1 Corinthians 12, the last verse there, earnestly desire these greater gifts. And you told the whole church to earnestly desire them. Lord, you want to have missionaries, but you want to have them consistent with the way they were in the New Testament as those sent ones, as those apostles that were sent out by the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Thank you for each one of us here. Thank you for your words. How exciting to be able to read your word. Deliver any of us from the arrogance of thinking we know it all. God, there's so much more we need to learn and discover. And now just help us as we spend uh, some time just remembering you. Thank you. We don't have to remember our sin. We've all been redeemed. We've been bought with a price, with the blood of Jesus. And now we break this bread. Remembering your body, we take this cup, this, this little bit of wine that was pressed out at the cross, your blood for this new covenant. Thank you that all of us that are priests here, all of us that know you, we can, we can share the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, and tell you, each of us, I want to tell you, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Okay.